This is Chuck Mayer with Fishy Business welcoming you to another weekly update. As promised, back from Dallas, back from Aquashella, we're starting another week here and as every Wednesday proves, we're back to another week of new dry goods, new fish, new things completely. No matter what you do, stay with me until the end of this video because there is something Fishy Business has never had before that came in today. And I'm gonna show you and you're gonna really be glad you did. So as you look around the room, this is the discombobulation of fish tanks and new product that has come in. The reason we started here is I wanted you to see all the new tanks that came in. We have the Cobalt Sea View 40 back in stock as we have lots of big tanks. Guy likes to order big tanks so I can sell and decorate big tanks. So big tanks are what we have. So we started here. I want you to come into the real part of the store, the, the store, and uh, we'll look at what else came in this week. As with everything, ponds are the rage right now. Uh, the weather has finally broken today of all days. So it's supposed to be the last cold morning in a while. Now temperatures are starting to get back up. Now it's safe to play with your pond. Pond plants, pond fish, pond supplies, everything, it's time now. So follow me. As you can see, Scotty Pockets is putting out tons of dry goods. Uh, one thing I want to talk about, we got the shrimp tanks back in stock. Right here, these little Aquions. For 70 bucks, you can have the coolest desktop tank you can have. I'm going to show you these set up in just a few minutes. It's a 7.5 gallon that you can decorate any way you want it. These are fantastic for the Neo shrimp. Freshwater shrimp are the rage. I talk about them every week and probably will for some time because they are, when I got back from Aquashella, this was a big rage there. Everybody was into all these little colorful shrimp. And the breeding of these shrimp lending to different color variations and things like that led us to see shrimp that were $1,000 a piece. Now ours are $6.99 a piece, or you can get five for 30 bucks. So they're well within a normal budgetary range to introduce you into the world of the Neo Cardenias. These right here, I've got in blue, yellows, red, mixed colors. They're great. They're a great little simple thing to put on your desk, put on your nightstand. And these were the tanks we were just looking at. For only 70 bucks, you can add these to your home office, house, anywhere you can think of. They also make great gifts. If you don't know what to get a special person, you got a hundred bucks in your budget, this is a great way to bring some part of nature, some part of an amazing ecosystem into their lives or your life. So, that's it with the shrimp right now. I want to show you too, as with pond season, we've stocked back up with all the supplies. Pond Perfect, SAT for clearing up ponds, Pond Prime, Everything you need to get a pond started, we've got, including the fish to go in there. One thing I'll talk about briefly, because everybody that has a pond has this as a problem at some point in time, is green water. And green water can easily be corrected with a UV filter. UV sterilizers, very, very important for a pond. If you've got a pond in an outdoor element where you've got light and you've got water, you're going to have algae and a UV sterilizer is the easiest way to control that algae. Basically the water is passing through the unit while a light, a UV light, at a certain amount of strength is going to kill all the algae that's in that water molecule itself. That spore is what constantly replicates and causes your water to look green. It also causes it to be where you can't see your fish or anything else in there. The UV sterilizer I have never in the entire time that I've sold UV sterilizers for ponds ever had one come back because the person didn't like what it did for their pond. Of course there's always little problems here and there but a UV sterilizer is the best way to control green algae in a pond. You can put chemicals in there, you can, but they're all temporary fixes. The UV sterilizer is a product that as we come into April, as we come into the prime part of pond season, this is the way to control green water in your pond. Okay, enough about that. Let's go look at the fish that came in this week. Okay, so fresh water. Check out these rummy nose. Rummy nose just came in this week. They're absolutely gorgeous little schooling fish. We don't get them every week, but there is no planet tank that should be free from a rummy nose tetra. 
beautiful in mass. They absolutely complement each other. The more you have, the more schooling. Absolutely beautiful in a, in a planted tank. We also got in, check out these. These are some hum, honey gouramis that came in. These are a crowd favorite with the gourami collectors. I've got a Sarah O'Nib. This is a little pelleted food that we sell from a company called Sarah. It is, it is a compacted fish food. And if you're ever having trouble seeing your fish come up to eat, all you have to do is put that little puppy on the glass and within minutes, you'll have fish crowding around. Take a step back, as soon as they start smelling the food, they'll start corralling around it. Okay, geez Louise. Okay, so that didn't work. <laughs> Any other time that would have worked, but because we're filming the weekly video, that didn't work. And I'm leaving this in so that you see that we're not all smart. <laughs> so, let me actually see if these fish want to eat the Sarah O'Nip pellet. Oh, clearly, there are fish that like it. For whatever reason, I guess the smell of my hand didn't work for them. But as you can see, the fish will corral around the food and they will start absolutely tearing it up. Okay, so let's look at some more freshwater fish. Right here, I've got these bloodfin tetras, a great schooling fish, along with these diamond tetras that just came in today. Back here, I have blue tetras, which I have not had in a very long time. Now, basically this tetra has blue infused kind of midway through the body, all the way to the base of the caudal tail. Sometimes with these small community fish, you need a group of them. You need multiple in a tank to really make their color pop. One neon tetra, one blue tetra, and you don't have very much. You put 10 or 12 of them in a tank, they're absolutely beautiful. Maybe not saltwater beautiful, but in and of their own right, they're absolutely beautiful. As we you know, talk from week to week about these planted tanks, I'm telling you, with a black background tank, with green all lush in the tank, a school of these puppies comes by and it is fantastic. So, blue tetras, we haven't had those in a while. That's, a, that's absolutely a great fish. We got large barbs in again this week. We got in flying fox. These are great algae eaters. The flying fox is a, uh, a small algae eating shark-like fish. Uh, they're great for planted tanks. They're great for any tank where you have algae, especially if you have algae growing on leaves. If you have algae growing on driftwood or rocks, you can even see how they're kind of corralling around the driftwood in this tank. Flying foxes are a fantastic fish. They're not very expensive. Super, super if you have light hair algae problems or algae problems in general where it's amassing on anything. So, come this way. I want to show you some of my favorite things. To take the shrimp one step larger, we've got crayfish. And these crayfish in a semi-aggressive tank, are pr you're pretty safe. I've got a blue lobster and I've got a tangerine lobster. These are really, really cool crayfish. They're not that expensive. They add a lot of beautiful color to the tank, especially as they grow. They are an opportunistic predator. But as I said, if they're in a semi-aggressive tank, maybe with barbs, things that are too fast for them, even as they grow, or in a larger tank, where it's not so easy for them to corral something, these would make great tank mates. And they would give a lot of activity on the bottom and in little hiding places and caves and things like that. Wonderful, wonderful for a semi-aggressive tank. I've got arowanas back in stock. I've got three beautiful arowanas. Arowanas are not for everyone, but they are really, really cool. A topwater fish that pretty much gets most of its food in the upper 10% of the tank. It doesn't, in larger tanks with larger fish, they're fairly adaptable because they grow very fast. They do grow large. They are considered a tank buster as Oscars, Paku, Dempsey's, things like that that you're going to want to keep in a larger tank. But arowanas are a showstopper and I have no tank in service or otherwise where they are present and they don't absolutely command total attention. So those are some of the highlights with freshwater this week. We've got a ton of stuff that's still being put out. Rainbows, blue acaras, lots of schooling fish, lots of, uh, I think I've got, hold on one second. I think I've got, yeah, a brand new batch of clown loaches. I like to draw attention to them because this is a bottom dwelling fish. 
that is very colorful. Or uh, they're also called tiger loaches because of the stripes, but that's a lot of color for fresh water. So a great little fish. So let's go look at some salt water that came in. And we're gonna start, the main thing that I wanna show you that came in, that kind of came unexpected while I was at Aquashella, were clams. We got giant tridacnoclata clams, again, in about every color that you can imagine. Clams are just one of the greatest jewels of nature. You can have all the corals in the world, but not until you put that Tridacna maxima clam in there do you really have something that is just, wow, I got a giant clam in my tank. You can watch how sensitive they are as my hand passes over the light. It's really, really cool to watch their mantles slowly opening as they pull in water and expel water. Giant clams primarily feed or convert the light into food as they get larger. These tridacnas will get probably about this big. And there is no two that are exactly the same. The color in each one of them is different from clam to clam. And no matter whether you have one, whether you have 10, whether you see them in someone else's tank, Maxima clams hold their own. That is the main thing as far as the clams are concerned. I wanna take you back here. Let's look at some invertebrates. We got in a cool little invertebrate called a squat lobster. Now it's not really a lobster. I can't say that we've ever had these before. It's actually more akin to a crab, though I don't think it's actually a crab either. It's some kind of crustacean that's kind of in between. But it's a squat lobster. What it does is it squats and it kind of feeds on zooplankton that passes through the water. As with any crab, I would, all, I would never say that any of them are 100% reef safe, only because crabs are opportunistic. Now this is a very, very small crab, so clearly he's not gonna take out any real size fish or something like that, especially in a large tank. But they are very cool. They're red and white striped. They lend themselves to having another little thing that's in your tank, and I think they're really cool. We got black tip starfish in this week and common stars, which we haven't had, I don't know, the last time we had them. As I've always said, the Salabrius wrasses, we got more Salabrius wrasses this week. You can see here and here. Uh, I got a dusky wrasse. I have not had this in a while. It's a beautiful off green wrasse with an electric green tail. Great, great fish. I've got some fairy wrasses that came in this week. I've got Let's see, I've got some chromas, some blue chromas that came in. Rock Skipper Blenny looks like every Dr. Seuss character you've ever seen. Um, another filament fin wrasse. This is one of my favorite wrasses because of the color. Beautiful, beautiful fish. I've got a Midas, Midas Blenny coming out right here. There is just absolutely a plethora of fish that came in. A checkerboard wrasse right there. More yellow chorus wrasses. What is this? Cool. I haven't seen this fish, I don't know, ever. A Timon Ras? I don't know, but for 60 bucks, it's not afraid and it's gorgeous. I gotta find out a little bit more about that fish. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. Wow, caught me off guard in the middle of my video. So that's a really, really cool Ras. Maybe it's reef safe. If it is, uh, you, I don't think you're gonna do better than 60 bucks for color like that on a fish. So. Tons of shrimp back in, snails, turbo snails, astrea snails. Uh, I got a black frogfish, something else I got. Oh wow, check this guy out. This is absolutely amazing. Look at that. If you got a tank that you're not worried about your fish getting eaten as it can swallow something just about as big as he is, a black frogfish might be for you. Okay, so I asked for your patience to the end and this is why. For years, I have wanted to bring jellyfish into the store. However, there has not been a very economical way to do that up until this point. Now my partner, Guy Griffin, has brought in the coolest jellyfish aquarium. You want to talk about something for your, for your dresser, for your nightstand, for your desk at work? You want to be the envy of everybody's other desk around work? This is the way to do it. Very, very few people have live jellyfish. In fact, up until now, I don't know anyone that has live jellyfish. I have four jellyfish tanks that came in today, as did the jellies. These are moon jellies. They, they stay in a kind of a constant suspension. They're very low maintenance. They're very easy to care for. Uh, their lifespan is about one year, sometimes two. 
but they're easy to acquire. We've got a line on them, and these are just the coolest things. So if you need something to kind of watch instead of counting sheep at night as you fall asleep, this is the thing for it. If you just need a conversation piece, I guarantee you no one coming to your house has jellyfish. These are so cool. They're amazing to watch. They're amazing to see. Fishy Business has jellyfish. And these aquariums are affordable for the budget. So I'm just so excited. We have jellyfish. I mean, I say it every week, and I'm probably going to say it every week for another month because I want you to see what we've got. Because right now, because pond season is so big, the amount of koi coming in, the platinum ogons, the yamabuki ogons, the black koi that we've obviously got three more of in this week, which, as we learned in videos past, are good luck for your pond and for you. Um, all of these fish, great pond fish. We are keeping the selection high. Thank you, Kevin. You're doing a great job with that. Live rock that just came in last week. I had an interesting question uh, that was brought to my attention. I bothered to show you live rock and talk about live rock. However, I forget that not every one of you know what live rock is. So I'm going to dumb myself down for a moment and try to explain that. Live rock basically is dead coral that has amassed over thousands and maybe even millions of years in the ocean, excuse me, and is teeming with live bacteria live animals, crustaceans, bryzoans, everything you can imagine that has culminated on this rock, thus the term live rock. It's not actually a living rock as rock can't be alive, right? But it is rock that is teeming with bacteria, it is teeming with life, thus we use the term live rock to explain any rock that outfits the corals that live in the ocean or forms the skeletal structure of the ocean. So yeah, sorry about that. Live rock, that's what it is. Um, I think as they're still putting out fish, I don't have any more really to show you right now, though there is a lot more to be seen. We have a new product line that's come in that's still in boxes. Scott's still working on. The store is closed. I wish you all a wonderful week. Um, it's been a long week with Aquashella and stuff. If you're interested to see what a fan-based uh, fish aquarium show is, Tune in to some of the videos that were just shot in the last couple of days, Aquashella. Uh, absolutely amazing art displays uh, with aquariums, with the direction that fishy business is going. Just have a great week. Uh, we'll see you here next week, hopefully, and uh, I want you to tune in because the next thing that you're going to see is coming from Reef of Palooza down in Orlando. My partner Guy Griffin is literally loaded up the truck today. He's taking the Fishy Business Store on the road, some amazing corals, and there will be video coming live this week from uh, Reef of Palooza. So to try to keep things from us to you, have a great week. Thank you for tuning in.